Hey, how's it going, everybody? My name is Aiden Turner, and I'm going to attempt a vlog reflection of the Game of the Week 1 Ultimate Werewolf that we played in Tabletop Games. It is a hidden role game that is my interpretation of Mafia. It's the only thing I've played similar to it, but um, I actually was one of the werewolves. If you can see, I, like, I still kind of look like a freaking werewolf. I haven't shaved yet. I've just been being lazy, but... Uh, the game was a lot of fun. It was it was very fun. I want to preface by saying I was a little worried about the class beforehand and how things were going to go. I don't really play tabletop games a lot. I've played Risk a ton with my family, and by a ton, I mean once a year, but it's a 10 to 15 hour session, so that's a ton of tabletop gaming for me. Um, but it was it was enjoyable because I, I was actually able to get some leadership. Um, th th I was able to think a lot about about how the game went and how I interpret that into to how I like to express myself as a leader or think that I am. Um, but I'll just kind of knock through the questions here that I had, had written down that was on the Canvas page and hopefully a good discussion will come from it. Um, yeah, so the game was essentially a circle that we all sat in. And the, the smaller version of Mafia to me is there's like a good guy, a bad guy, and then someone who can call that out. But this was essentially was like, everybody had a role. There were three bad guys. Um, and some roles did more than others, like such as my role was every night I could wake up in my team and I could point to somebody and execute them. Somebody could also save that person if they pointed to them or save them randomly or X, Y, Z. There were a ton of roles. You could kill somebody and then their lover died too if they if you got the right person and you know, whatnot. Um, super intricate and it was really fun. Um, Definitely not super confusing because thankfully I only had to play the bad guy, um, which I don't I don't do often. But uh, but when I do, apparently I do a good a good enough job because we ended up winning. Um, and I think I think leadership wise, I, I I I've been trying to think of another way to to describe this. So hopefully somebody out here can. Um, I normally don't win those games, especially as the bad guy. And so when I did, I, I actually tried really hard to win that game um, because for, for whatever reason, I, I, I sat down in, in that class and, um, and I was scared and I was worried. And then we started playing this game and it was like Mafia, but it was different. It was more intricate. And we were in you know, we're at university, but here we are playing a game and having fun. But I knew there were ties to it somehow for if their education. And I was like, you know, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to win this game. I'm just going to, I'm going to do it. I'm going to see how I get And I felt like it was like social manipulation almost. And I hate it sounds like it, the evil, like the the bad guy, something the bad guy would say, you know what I mean? Because I think there's more to it, which um, might tie into the video after when we watch how they say, like, the most important role isn't isn't the, uh, I mean, yes, you have to have the initial leader who, like, stands out and does his thing or whatever, but the first follower is super key, too. And I kind of honed in on that before I knew what that was. And the game kind of did, too. It, it took itself, I kind of followed the game. So there was a first follower in the game, so in ours that we played, Whoever pointed to somebody first to get them out, normally the next guy would point to that guy. So it wasn't that the first person would follow the initial guy. It was the, whoever followed at all, the beginning, the first of any of it, became like, it was really key. And so I, I recognize that like, you can still have individual leaders trying to, to do their own things and choose their own paths, but you have to have a first follower f every single time for a different stake. So like, in the game, the seer got out first because he thought somebody was, he thought somebody was the werewolf, and then so then everybody got the seer out, and I didn't have to say anything. I just kept my mouth shut, and then after that, I slowly tried to incorporate myself as one of the group because I followed with that, and then, um, and I just I don't I don't know. It was it was really like, it wasn't like I had thought everything out methodically or whatnot. As I was kind of acting, reacting and then plotting during like the sleep phases and then also kind of um just having fun and seeing if I could really like be be with be with the community literally and metaphorically as in with my classmates while also with the the town of the good people trying to stop the werewolves you know what I mean so it was it was a weird like bonding moment that um that I, it was not like super deep or anything, but it was, it was really fun to just kind of hang out with my classmates 
and feel like I can use my gaming ability, what I have, my learning ability, just all aspects of charisma, what I've, you know, my Fallout 4, freaking strength build only vibes, and I don't know, it was just, it was a lot of fun, I had a good time. Um, I think my little brothers would enjoy playing that game a lot. I think my family would have fun as well. Um, it would be a fun family game to play, I like a cookout. Um, definitely not for the adults or older folk, but um, they would they would enjoy it too once they get the hang of it. They might get a little caught up on some of the rules with all the characters and uh, and werewolf compared to mafia. But if if you made it pretty cut and clear for them to where they couldn't screw it up and they still did, I'm sure they'd have fun at that point. <laughs> um, the hardest part was uh, the hardest part was not smiling and keeping my heartbeat down and tapping my feet continuously while pointing people when I woke up, to be honest, because because uh, I was getting excited and I was having fun. I was like, oh, this is this is kind of this is kind of going well for the bad guys. This is we're doing a good job here. And I recognized the first time that when I pointed somebody out, I had stopped tapping my feet or I'd done like a lesser version of it. And, um, and I was thinking so in depth into all of this. I was like, if someone was next to me and they recognized that, when the guy called werewolves or whatever, that was, oh, that, that's gonna be him. And so I was like, I was really trying to hyper-focus on, um, on all of the little things. Um, and it was, I don't know, it was, it was different. The easiest part was, uh, the easiest part was speaking. And that came natural to me. Because I, I had thought that that was going to be the hardest part. And I wanted to say that the hardest part was somehow convincing my classmates that I wasn't the bad guy. But it was less of me convincing that I wasn't the bad guy. And me so more trying to convince them that I had good arguments for who was the bad guy or whatnot. For instance, at one point I had got one of my teammates out. And I knew it was one of my teammates. Um, but I didn't initiate that. One of the other guys did. And then later on in the game, after he had done that... He started around by saying, and even at the end he concluded when he was trying to defend himself, like, I wouldn't, why would I have gotten him out if I'm a werewolf? Werewolves don't do that or whatever. And I was the bad guy in my chair, like, <laughs> I felt like Dr. Doofenshmirtz over there and I knew I, was, I had something coming, but I wanted to, I wanted to curate it just right. I couldn't jump in just then. I had to make it work somehow. And finally it was down to just like a, a four of us. And he was still in the group and I had, I had mentioned that and I was like, I was like, man, you're a pretty intelligent guy. You know, like, I don't, I don't even play tabletop games. And you came up with all that. And you're saying all this. That's a lot of explaining. And then I had to I had to vote for him. And one of the dudes next to me who I, honestly, I wanted to get him out instead because I think he was really quiet. And it would have been easier to, like, my initial thought was it would be easier to get him out because he wasn't saying anything. But I thought this this strategy of action was more of a, it was a slight bigger risk, but a far more reward. And as soon as I did it, the quiet guy was like, yeah, you're right, dude, this, it's that guy. And it, it worked. It was it was nuts. But then, no, but then my other, I had, there was two werewolves and two humans at the end of that game. So then my teammate, he ended up pointing to me, even though we could have just pointed to him and that would have been the game. The game went up, but he took an even bigger risk and he, he played the role too. So we all stayed down, like grounded in our, in our good guy roles, because he was like, I'm a rule follower, man, I gotta go for you, because it was, the rule was that the second, the first guy to vote, this, he would always vote for him, because that's how we, that's how the game started, you know, but it was, it was funny, it was funny, it was fun, it was, it was, uh, not, not nerve-wracking, but, um, <clears throat> it was exciting, you know, it was, a, it was a good time, um, the question of more likely or less likely to take risks in this scenario than in typical leadership roles and whatnot. I would like to comment on here, but really I think that's for everyone else to, to describe me for. I would say, yes, I take these risks in leadership all the time. I'm always trying to get the whole team together, even if that means I myself am struggling to you know x y or z because at the end of the day we've all got pieces of us we're missing we're all got screws loose different parts that are out of whack right now but um if you push shit under the rug or if you know what i mean if you if you try and be a better version of yourself only for you and not for the better of the team or whatnot like there's 11 guys on a football field and i hate to make the stupid sports analogy but 
when it's 1v10 and you're still playing 11 other guys because you're trying to hold up your own roster spot every time. You're not going to play as a unit. The team's not going to play well. You're not going to play well. And eventually, it's going to be 11 different guys versus 11 different guys, and you'll be not one of them. So for me, one of the only ways I've been able to externally stand out but internally feel like I am doing my part is by pushing myself not to take risks but to do that next step that is riskier than staying comfort because if you're comfortable with where you're at or if you're in a stationary path don't get me long life don't get me wrong life is all about the fluxes but you can flux on an upgrowth you can flux on a downgrowth you can't you know what I mean staying right here in the center yes you want to be accepting of many things in life and have a neutral standpoint on a lot but not in how you grow, not in how you take risks in life, not in how you succeed and fail. Um, so yeah, I'd say I do that fairly often. Um, and I only approach leadership differently to this and that I'm, I hope not the bad guy <laughs> in a real leadership role, but, um, but from the evil perspective, I think this was, this was, this was a cool, this is a cool way to, uh, to think about and process how I, how I do my leadership things i don't know <laughs> um yeah thanks for listening to me ramble uh i haven't done a vlog assignment before either so so uh, this was also fun i'm it's a, it's a it's a new process for for everything here but i'm enjoying it so far thank you very much